Hello and welcome to a new video about controls, non-feedback controls. This time we are going to talk about electronic controls. Last few videos we talked about electrical controls. And I can tell you, electronic controls are pretty much the same. We even deal with electronic controls when we did digital technique. Yeah? You know, we talked about ends, we talked about ors, we talked about nands, we talked about nors, we talked about knots, we talked about flip-flops, we talked about this and that and that and that. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah? There is a whole video series about these logic elements. Yeah? Those logic elements can be produced with semiconductors yeah? in an integrated circuit. And basically, they are built with switches, contacts. However, they are not contacts like in our relays. They are contacts, electronic contacts. So semiconductor contacts, they are built with transistors. But either we can switch them on or off. And depending on the combination of the contacts, we will reach different functions. Well, exactly like we've done in electric control, but with, with transistors. The issue or the thing is now that I can make such an integrated circuit really small. And I'm talking about really small. So we're talking about, meanwhile, we're talking about nanometers here. Incredible. Yeah? We're we're an area of atom layers. Yeah? Not one, but several, but countable. Yeah? It's not like huge. Yeah? It's really tiny, these structures inside there. This means even complex logics can be integrated into a very, very small, tiny area, which does not need too much energy. So again, we are shrinking the energy consumption and the needed place for a certain logic. So this is the big benefit of electronic controls and also the where topic. I said, okay, contact welding, so this is no issue. We can even switch it faster since Tiny things can switch fast. It's clear, yeah? if I have a big contact, boom, the switching time will be longer. If I have a tiny contact, even mechanical contact, tick, the switching time is smaller. Yeah? And if I have a really tiny contact, and like I said, we are talking nanometers here, yeah? then it is really fast. Yeah? Even if there is no mechanical movement, it's just loading or unloading some areas there. So, we are fast, we are we're fast, we need less place, we need less power and also compared to the, or compared to the, 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 the complexity of the logic, we are much cheaper. Okay. Electronic controls. Okay. Two possible things. Yeah. I now Think about some, some logic, huh? control logic, a build in memories, a yeah? build in step controls, a sequence control, or whatever. Yeah? I've made up my logic. Yeah? And then I want to have this realize this logic. Yeah? I can either do it with specific elements, but then I would really lose the benefit yeah? if I'm buying a bunch of ends, a bunch of ores and whatever, a uh, bunch of memories and then we, and solder them together, I would quite need a big, a quite big area. However, if I concentrate them into one chip, uh, I'm really tiny and really fast. Okay? Such integrated circuits, which are specific to my application, uh, are, co are so-called ASICs. Application. Sp 
specific specific integrated circuit ASIC and I can really do this huh? I think about some logic I design this logic yeah and then I go to some semiconductor specialist and say hey this is my the logic of the ASIC can you produce this for me I said yes no issue which type of package do you need huh? okay how many input and outputs uh, how do we want to fix specify a little bit more then I give you a price huh? ASIC it's working right then I have a control element a chip huh? tiny chip with a lot of legs probably which is doing exactly what I am requesting what I have designed the issue with such chip manufacturing is that you know until this machinery is working until this is really producing flawless chips it takes a while you know I already told you there are structures inside which are tiny, really tiny, and I have to to mark to to mask this. I have to 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 etch this. I have to uh, belichten. Yeah, I have simply to undergo a procedure layer by layer, and all those layers need to fit together and have the row holes at the right position so that layer can touch each other so there's a conductive layer which will be etched then is, there is a isolating area which will be etched then is the next conductive layer and layer over layer layer over. and all those layers needs to fit together that I can really expect this thing to work huh? this is not that easy Okay, In the, especially at the beginning I need quite some time until this manufacturing process is is tuned okay after it is tuned it is easy or easier it's good nothing is really easy but it is easier so I can produce chips on mass yeah, back 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 then they are getting cheap but the first few chips are very expensive okay application specific integrated circuits do have the benefit yeah, that they are very fast yeah. they are fast and they usually uh, they cannot be disturbed yeah. so they are robust yeah. they are really fast they are really robust yeah. even electromagnetic influence and so on usually it is not that of an issue yeah. the big disadvantage of this ASICs are they cannot be changed huh? cannot be changed so, uh, why would I change it imagine you might make made a mistake okay you might made a mistake this mistake is in there huh? you cannot change it and if this mistake is a showstopper you have wasted hundreds of thousands not even millions yeah. this is only only for big scale yeah. and this makes this thing even worse yeah. because I cannot order one yeah, because this one would be really expensive yeah. I have to order a lot yeah. and if a lot has failure then you know, I really have to spend a lot of time into into designing this stuff. Okay, so the engineering costs are usually very high with these application-specific integrated circuits huh? because they cannot be changed. So I need to be sure they are working. Yeah? And I only can buy them on big scale, or depends on me. Yeah, but if I want a reasonable price, I have to buy them big. Uh, big amount since I buy them in big amount I have a bunch of them on stock okay 
I have a lot of them on stock, they are produced once, yeah? then they are there. Yeah? I have to estimate the requirement of replacement parts in the beginning. Yeah? Issue with replacement parts. If after two years I'm running out of these ASICs and somebody said, okay, I have a pretty new thing, but however, this one chip is broken, maybe we can exchange. No, I'm sorry, we are out of this. This customer will not be happy. Okay? Replacement parts, issue. Yeah? You have to store them somehow. Okay? ASICs. Yeah, like I said, big benefit also. Pretty much copy protected. This can also be a benefit, this cannot be changed. Yeah? Because you know this is the silicon, it works that way. Yeah? And even if the most stupid assumable user is trying to reprogram this, he will fail. He or she will fail. Yeah? This might be good also. Uh, so it cannot be changed. This is simply a feature. Uh, and copy protected, well, I cannot read out any program. I really have to, to analyze the ASIC, which is also not that easy yeah, because of the small structures. So this is one possibility of integrating a, a logic in electronic way. Another possibility is the so-called FPGA. Field, programmable, uh -huh. I never know if there's a second M. FBGA Feed Programmable Gate Array. How is this working? You know, this is also is also semiconductor stuff, also a part with a lot of legs and so on. However, it's a standard part. Yeah? So you can buy it out of stock, standard. Yeah? And how do we get now the logic inside? Well, Think about a field able programmable, field programmable gate array as a lot of NORs or NANs or whatever. Yeah? And we talked about that we can realize every logic by only using a NAND or a NOR. Yeah? We call it NAND and NOR technology. So if I have a lot of those logic elements inside and can configure the, the connections between those, huh? then I can realize all logics I want to have. Huh? You can imagine this thing is working like this. Yeah? So there is, there is a silicon chip which is implementing a lot of array, so a lot of gates, so a lot of logic elements, and I can select the combinations in between. Huh? This program yeah, will be inside there. Yeah. So I'm using a standard part. This is important. I'm using a standard part. So since a standard part is usually widespread, yeah, I do not have this issue with my fault in there yeah, because it's a approved chip. Okay, It already proved itself. Yeah. Every other parties, other companies, are using the chip as well. So this is a benefit. Proof, proof chip. Uh, proof chip. Or I write proved function. Okay. This is a, a huge benefit of field programmable gatorade. And Programmable, so this means changeable. This means even if I have a failure in my logic, 
I program it with a different logic working. I can I can change it. So I do not need to be that accurate. I need to be accurate, of, of course, yeah? but I do not need, I'm not taking that big of a risk like an ASIC. Okay? So the, the costs during development are smaller, simply. Yeah? Which also reflects into shorter, shorter cycle times. Clear, right? Uh, yeah, proof function. However, there's there's the slower usually, yeah, and they are not that robust. Since there is something inside which can change, yeah, because it's programmable, yeah, and peak in electromagnetic peak or something like this would maybe change the logic inside there. Yeah? So they are not that robust. I mean, a connection is a connection. If it's a programmed connection, this is working somehow else, yeah, I can reprogram it. So they are not that robust. Yeah? Slower, because they are, they are lower rates. Yeah? And, oh, of course, benefit, yeah? benefit. They are cheaper on on medium scale. However, <laughs> they're more expensive on large scale or big scale. So if I really, really need a lot of logics which are working the same way, an ASIC is, is cheaper. No, because I told you, yeah, because once the process is running, no issue. Yeah? Here they are cheap on small and medium scale, of course, yeah? because but on large scale, uh, it is cheaper to produce you my own. Yeah? They also the field programmable gate array usually use more power. So if you have an application where power consumption is a huge topic, ASICs usually use less power because they don't have this overhead of programming interfaces and so on. Basically there are two different types of field programmable gate arrays. There's one which can be programmed once or one which can be reprogrammed in the field. The one which can be programmed once if you are realizing okay there's an error inside, get it out, program the next one, get rid of the first one. These are more robust to, to pulses or something like this, this once programmable. The reprogrammable are not that robust. Okay? However, you can reprogram them in the field. This is the huge benefit. Yeah. When it comes to terms of, of flexibility, ASIC is, is a little bit more flexible. Uh, you can you have more freedom in designing it. Here you are somehow stuck to this design or uh, things which are implemented by the producer of this FPGA. This is faster, this is not that fast. Here written slower. Compared to the PLC, this is fast as well. I uh, just want to mention it. Uh, just because it's written slower, it's only compared to an ASIC. Compared to a PLC, FPGA, phew, fidget fair. Uh, so this is... This is electronic controls. Okay? Electronic realization. Basically like electric controls, but smaller. You see, fixed control, programmable control, and then really programmable controls are called pro PLCs, programmable logic controls. They work like, like a computer. And this is the topic we are going to talk about in the next few videos. So next few videos, we 
are going to talk about really programmable stuff with, with how you imagine it. Huh? How a PLC is working, how they are coded and so on, we will get to know in the next few videos. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.